Welcome to our worship from Seal Church, led by me, Canon Anne Labar. The hymn which ends the service is sung by the choristers of St Martin in the Fields. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we make our confession to God and hear his words of forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The Gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, He saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. 
are you someone who prefers people that are direct and to the point? Or do you prefer to be gently led, kind of warmed up to hear a message, receive some news? It seems that the gospel writers catered for different audiences, or at least had their own styles. In Mark's gospel, in the first column on the first page, he's straight into Jesus in the wilderness. Maybe it's just what we need to hear in this first week of Lent. A bit like shouting, Lent is here, it's begun. Don't dither, get stuck in, make the most of this part of the Christian year, and you will be richly rewarded. Matthew and Luke don't start their descriptions of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness until the fourth chapter. But unlike Mark, they then go on to list them and provide a more detailed account. Mark has a sense of urgency to start proclaiming the good news. So without any genealogy or family history, Jesus arrives fully grown from Nazareth to be baptised in the River Jordan by John. After telling us that he was baptised by John in the River Jordan, we hear that the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Jesus had known when John emerged that his time had come to respond to the summons and accept the challenge of God. Like Matthew and Luke, Mark still tells of Christ being tempted, but his is the only gospel to tell us of the angels who waited on him. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. It's a really powerful detail and worthy of careful contemplation. Perhaps it helps if we first take a step backwards and identify the times we really felt that we were in our own wilderness. For some, this will be times of great personal sadness, grieving a loved one, or times of fear and anxiety when darkness feels like it's closing in on us. As we look around the world, many are literally being driven out into the desert, forced to camp in a wilderness to avoid conflict, where their future is uncertain and there is no apparent plan to bring their suffering to an end. Who do you think the angels might be that offer respite and hope in such dire circumstances? I don't know the answer, but I do believe that they will be among people caught up in these many desperate situations. Mark doesn't imply that we should skip the bits where we face up to temptations wrestle with the tempter or acknowledge our greatest fears, our own beasts that threaten to overwhelm us. But even in these situations, we need to keep an eye open for the angels. Sometimes it's easier to see the angels that have waited on us in our times of need. When we look back, they weren't quite so obvious when we were suffering. They may have been people who showed us kindness and stuck with us when we least deserved it. Maybe they were those who were generous to us at an unseen cost to themselves. In times of personal sadness and despair, it's for each of us to reflect upon our own personal wilderness experiences in order to identify the angels we met, those who made real God's love and care for humanity. Lent can be a time to move our minds out of a rut and with God's help identify where we need to change course, break bad habits and restore health to our relationships. Relationships with God, his creation and each other. Whilst wilderness experiences can be frightening and hard, 
they can also take us away from the daily routines and comforts which can make us slothful. The fasting element can be a first step towards getting ourselves in a place where we can think, reflect and pray more deeply. Denying ourselves whatever your indulgence is, be it alcohol, chocolate or anything that doesn't give us positive energy and sustenance may prove to ourselves that we still have some self-discipline and that we're serious about this. Whilst others already know that they're serious and focus solely on the positive action of acknowledging that we only exist by God's grace. In the story of Noah, we hear that God set his bow in the clouds as a sign of his covenant with the earth. Our Bible reading describes it a bit more fully as the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. There's a feeling that Noah takes his responsibility seriously, bring humans and animals together in a way that reflects our duty of stewardship, care and preservation of God's creation. Earlier in the book of Genesis, God has already given humans dominion over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. I guess that includes snakes and slugs. And you can probably think of your own favourite creeping thing. Perhaps these make God smile as much as they make some of us cringe. Yet the dis disconnect of so many from the natural world through choice or restriction is one that also risks making it harder for them to see God's loving creation. Not only see it, but be influenced in it, by it in a way that goes beyond words. I'm sure that many of us and the people we come into contact with are currently feeling a little bit less like hibernating at the moment as we enjoy the effects of a little more light each day, as we see the early flowers bloom and the buds start to appear. I'm among many who have already started sneezing at this early time in the calendar, as the tree pollen makes its debut. Lent, despite the tree pollen, is a time to open our eyes wide and take in God's creation like a soothing balm when compared to the screens we spend so much time staring at. It's a time to ask ourselves hard questions and then to answer them honestly, like what is really important to us? Are we interested in God's plan for us? Where does our strength and guidance come from, particularly in times of great challenges? Those of us who engaged with the material last week were challenged to think about things we cannot see, but that are real. Describing the colour of the sky to someone that's never seen it was one task. George Matheson, the Scottish hymn writer, knew a thing or two about life's challenges, losing his sight at an early age, but he clearly had his own imagery in his mind based upon how he felt about God's love for him and for all of us. His hymn, O Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go, finds meaning in God's rainbow promise and contains the words that you may recall. O joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain, that morn shall tearless be. Learning to live a Christian life means learning to welcome and trust in a reality that we cannot always physically see, an easy target of ridicule for those who reject Jesus' message. The old-fashioned hikers amongst us, and the younger ones who are wise enough to know that they can't rely on their phones for sat-nav in the mountains, 
will know what it's like to put your faith in a compass. We can rely upon it to point us in the right direction. We can keep making progress even when there are no signs. We can continue making progress through darkness and fog when we can't see anything at all. Yet, if we stick with it and trust it, we inevitably end up somewhere in the region that we set out for. This Lent, I feel that we need to look beyond the things that we may give up, even though they may have a part to play in our journey. And there's one important thing that we must not give up on, and that is ourselves. It's part of our realisation that temptation isn't just the pleasurable things we may need to deny ourselves, but the worst temptation of all, and to believe that God loses interest in us when we fail to follow his ways. It's just what Satan would love us to believe, so that we eventually give up on God and ourselves. Jesus came to show us that the opposite is true, that no matter how dark times may appear, no matter how much we may loathe ourselves, that God is still there with us. God still loves us and God still has a plan for us. I pray that we can all come to know and feel this truth a little more this Lent. Amen. And so we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.